Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works and today we're in Swim, Washington and we have a special treat. Um, we're working on Techno RVs, RV, yeah. <laughs> but what we're going to be doing for them is we're going to be swapping out their uh, transfer switch, okay? And um, so basically we're taking the old one out, putting the new one in for them. What's the purpose of an automatic transfer switch? Well, it's a convenience for you. If you don't have an automatic transfer switch, then every time you go from generator to shore power, if you didn't have an automatic transfer switch, then you'd have to come out here and unplug and plug in and do all that kind of stuff. So this does that for you. And so these big contactors in here, okay, um, and you're gonna let the power go through. So here, let me do this. You've got your two phases, the, a, the black and the red. Here's neutral, okay? And uh, so one of these, let's just, for purposes of instruction, call this one the generator, and let's call this one shore power, okay? And then you have all these electronics and everything that basically makes a decision for you. This one was generator, right? Okay, so right now, they're not sealed in, is what we would call that. If you can see this, they, they, they will seal themselves in, okay? And uh, here, this one will seal itself in. Um, now, when you are on shore power, then you'll hear this clunk sound, and this contactor will seal itself in, okay? It'll lock itself in. Now, when it is sealed in, it is both electrically and mechanically uh, isolated from this one. So if I try to push this one in, I cannot, okay? But what, I'm pushing, 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 pushing. I'm going to release this one. Now I can push this one in. Let me see if you can get that closer. So see, I'm pushing this one in, but I can't push this one in as soon as I... Now I can do that. So there's a mechanical linkage in between the two that will prevent both of them from being sealed in at the same time. Not only is there a mechanical linkage, but there's also an electrical linkage through these contactors on the side, these normally open, normally closed contactors that are auxiliary contactors to the contactor, the bigger contactor, that electrically will isolate one from the other. Okay, so it's not possible for them both to be sealed in at the same time. If you were to take the cover off, you'd see these little spring-loaded um, pads that, that, that press down. So, what's the purpose of this? Um, I'm going to turn this thing over because I want to show you something. Okay, so look, let's look on the top. Red, white, black. They're all the same. Okay, now we're going to tie off of one of these and it's going to go out this hole and this is the side that is going to go to your coach. So it doesn't matter pretend it was always this way and this one was still generator, this one was always shore power, let's just pretend. It might be, just, just go with me on this, okay, because I'm trying to explain what these things do. So, we need to get power to your breaker panel in your coach. So we're going to come out of here and we're going to connect the black wire to your coach panel to the black, white, red, and then ground right here, okay. So this hole right here is going to go to your breaker panel. Now if you look at these wires, it doesn't matter which side fed these wires. So let's say this is generator and let's say this is shore power. So here I have my shore power wires connected. Guess what? Just like up here. It goes through black, white, red, and then this is my generator, black, white, red. Okay? So these are my wires coming from my generator. These are my wires coming from my shore power through the two holes on the bottom. Oh look right there on the bottom. It says shore power and uh, generator. Right there. So let me change my story. Let's make this one generator. Why? Because it tells us right there, generator power. And let's make this one shore power because it says right here, shore power. That was a sticker I was looking for inside. I finally found it. So <clears throat> now that we know that, that's kind of important. Now that we know that, shore power, generator power. If my power is coming in from my shore through the hole right here, okay, black, white, red, and ground right here, then when this gets sealed in, power will pass through it to these wires here. And then they're going to jump on top of this one. Now this one's not sealed in, so they're, these screws are going to be energized, but these will not because he's not sealed in. And the big idea is that when this pulls in, it connects the screws, okay? It connects them. On my website, resources tab, go down to my gallery, cruise my gallery, and you will see some pictures that I've made of these taken apart where there are some weld spots on it. And I will explain in just a moment where those weld spots came from, okay? Shore power comes in, passes through because this is sealed in, loops over to this side, energizing these top screws, and then the wire comes out and goes up into my coach. 
And then here comes generator power. We've unplugged. We've unplugged from shore power. Now we're going to turn our generator on. The generator will spin up, seal this guy in. This is that clunk you hear, which we'll hear here in a minute. Okay, so generator power is feeding down here. The black, the white, the red, and over here is ground. Okay, it's going to come through, and now it's going to hit these screws. They're going to be hot, and so are these on the top, but the ones on the bottom will not be. Why? Because this isn't sealed in, okay, if all that makes sense. Now, that's the purpose of this. So one side or the other is going to be sealed in. It's automatically. They're isolatedly, iso electrically and mechanically separate from each other. It makes a big clunk sound when it pulls in. Okay, and they're big because they can handle the amperage that you're going to be feeding them. 50 amps per leg, 50 on this, 50 on this for a total of 100. Okay, does that make sense? Now, let's explain why one might fail in best practices if you have one of these in your coach. Best practice. When you are going to transition from generator to shore power, make sure you turn off your air conditioners. Okay, if you don't turn off your air conditioners, and you make a habit of not turning off your air conditioners, then you're going to be burning up these transfer switches. Again, on my website, I have a resources page with a gallery, and I've got a couple transfer switches on there that have caught fire, that have failed, that show arcing on those contactors. And that's all because the air conditioner was running. I haven't updated the gallery page in like two, three years, but they do have a couple pictures on there of some transfer switches I did back in the day when I was doing pictures. Now we got video and YouTube, yeah. So, um, Make sure you turn off your air conditioner when you're transitioning from shore power to um, generator power, okay? If you're going to swap out one of these things, make sure that you feed it properly on the bottom. We found the sticker on the bottom. Make sure you torque your screws to the rating that's laced, listed on here. Make sure that if you're going to put one in, you do not mount it like this. You want to mount it this way, this way, this way, this way, or this way, but never this way. You never want to put it where, the, where the, the sticker is face up. Anything else is fine, but not face up. Okay, so if we can remember all those things, let's get busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go tell Eric inside. Um, like I said, it's exciting as Techno RV. we got to do a good job uh, for it. And uh, let's go turn him off. He's probably on his computers and playing with all of his, his Techno stuff uh, to do all the wonderful stuff he does for Techno RV business. Um, let's go tell him to turn off all his power and then we'll get busy spinning wrenches out here, okay? Okay, I'm gonna leave you set up right there and um, we're going to uh, uh, try to get some work done with you staying right where you're at. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll unplug the, the shore power. I'm gonna use one of these little gadgets and I'm just gonna touch around all these things. I'm looking for any power, anything. If this thing was hot, this, this little chirper thing would beep on us, okay? So apparently it's not. And uh, so now we know that this one's going to go to the uh, feed the, the breaker panel in the coach. Okay. I'd love to move this cord reel here, but I might consider that. Nah, I'll work with it. Because uh, I'd rather have you on that side. I'm more of a right handy kind of person. Now we're going to be reusing these nuts right here on the new box. Another thing I like to see is these little um, uh, feral crimps and I've got a set and I'll put a link down below but if it's not done like that it's always good to do that it just kind of keeps all the things from whiskering out on you so we're going to keep all these parts together there we go okay now at this point I can safely remove everything I don't really need to use paint pens or anything let me get a bigger screwdriver I don't really need to use paint pens because on my new box, on my old box, I've got black, white, red, you know, so whatever these colors are, I'm going to transfer them over to this side. Make sense? We've done some other videos in this RV park, so we do have a bit of a fan club. So people are giving me shout outs. <laughs>
Ooh, that wasn't tight at all. That wasn't very good. So I've even done videos for you guys. Um, what I'd like to see you do is um, frequently, I'd like to see you um, tighten all your screws. Now you'll notice that, see this guy does not have, um, he's black, so that goes on red. So I'm gonna get some red marking tape and I'm gonna tape this so that when I put it back together, I know that this is red. And what that'll do is it'll keep all the phases the same inside the coach. Okay, so we got a little piece of tape right here. It's red. Okay, so now he's the red one. Okay, and then he's got enough white on him to let me know that that's white. And then here's black. Okay. Make sense? At this point, we have all the wires loose. Um, sometimes I'll have an external ground, but this one does not. So now I'm gonna take these nuts off. Right, those ones in the back are gonna be kind of fun. So these are great. Like I say, I'll be putting links below in the description for all these things. It makes this kind of work a little easier. Okay, there is our, tra our, our transfer switch. new one. Now you'll notice in the corner there, I've still got these screws in here. It's going to make it a little easier to feed it back in. Also, I want to feed this back in right here because he was kind of hard to get out. So we'll feed him as we go. No, I had it in all the screws, but I missed it. it came out. Oh, the whole screw came out. That's what happens. Okay, then that's acceptable. Let's 
See on that upper right hand corner there, the screw was there. I guess I bumped him when he came out. So. And there it is. Okay, so now at this phase, all we're gonna do now, I'm gonna tighten up these rings. I'm gonna move the camera so I can get in there a little bit better. We're gonna tighten up all the rings and then we're going to reconnect all these pretty wires back where they go. Okay, so, but I'm gonna probably move the camera over to the other side. That's next. Okay, I moved you down a little bit um, so we can both get in there. Um, okay, so here's where we're at. I've tightened these nuts. Okay, they're all tight all the way around. I've made sure all my four screws are tightened. And um, so now we know that our box is, is fixed to the wall and all of our, our conduits are bonded to the box. Okay, so let's, I always like to start with ground first. It's just an old rule I've developed over the years um, because if I, if I'm going to forget anything, I don't want to forget my grounds. And um, so let's do that first. So whenever I'm doing any wiring of any type, I'm gonna get I'm gonna bring it in behind. I think it'll look better. I'm an artist. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see here. Now I'm gonna come back and hit this guy with a 35 inch pound torquing screwdriver. And um, I've got this set to 45 inch pounds right now, so I can get these up here. Now um, have these been loosened? Lid? Not yet. Okay, so I'm going to loosen this guy. And I'm going to loosen this guy. So it's like what I was talking about at first. Because these wires are bonded, or bust to the top, that means that whatever gets through this, it's going to bust on the top. That's okay, because whoever's not open is dead on this side. Okay, and... Another, another benefit of this is if you have your generator on and you're connected to shore power, you're not going to backfeed power back into the utility. Okay. And um, there's a thing called bucking phases. You won't be doing that where your, your AC sine wave and their AC sine wave might be off a little bit and you'll buck phases and have a big explosion. That's never fun. Uh, so let's see here. I'm right here. I'm going to leave you where you're at, but I am trying to get around you here. There we go. Okay, so he's in. And um, this guy, I want to make sure he gets seated right. Let me loosen that a little more. I found that's a four millimeter. Uh, four millimeters seem to fit the best in that versus a five thirty seconds. Make sure we get a good bite on the wire before we torque it. There he is, okay. Yeah, he went in nicely. 
in there nicely. Move it in there nicely. Okay. Torquing screwdriver in action. So here's how you set these things. I'll show you that. When you buy them, you're gonna, it's going to come with where are you at? It's going to come with these two pieces. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can get the part number. I'll make a link. Go down to the description. You'll see a link for this. So basically, you put this inside here, and let me take a glove off. There we go. Okay. Where is everybody? So I want to get. So there's there's a part number. Okay. Um, again, link below. But look in that little window, right in there. Okay. So as I turn this, you see how it says 44. I know I'm having a trouble time. So here's 42. And so the, the cover plate says torque the screws to 45. So we're going to go to, it, it goes by twos. So we're going to go to 40, between 46 and 44. Do you see that? Okay. So let me zoom you back out right there. How about that? Okay. Then this is another part, if you will. And uh, what it does is it gives me an open quarter inch end. And so this goes in here like that. And then I've got a four millimeter Allen. He snaps in. Makes sense? So now we're set to 45 inch pounds. I've got an adapter that fits in there that allows me to put a quarter inch drive in it, our uh, um, tool. And now I'm going to put my gloves back on. Gloves are back on. And now we're going to turn this until it snaps, and you'll know it when it happens. So listen, it's not even ready yet. 45 is a good two-handed grip. Okay, here we go. You'll hear the thing snap. Here we go. I know my arm's in your way, sorry. There you go. So that's 45 right there, okay? So that is torqued to spec. There we go. So you notice I'm trying to turn it. And it's just not turn it any tighter. There you go. Now, this guy's 35. I'm going to reset him to 35 in the end. So let's get over to this side. Now, I've matched up my colors red, white, and black. Okay, so up on the top, I've got black, right? Oh, let me loosen those. Okay, hold on. Let me loosen these. So here would be a something that would have been nice to have done. And if you're watching this and you're about to do yours, do this. Loosen these out before you put it in and kind of peek inside to make sure that it's open enough. Because right now I can't really see if I, unless I get a mirror. So it might be a good idea to loosen all these before you um, put it in, put, put it in the hole. Okay, so, and I've just found that and here's my ground and Here's my ground, okay. So we're gonna try to get him. There he goes, he went in there nicely. Let me, you see what I'm going for here. Let me move the camera so I can get my body up in there. But basically I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna connect my ground, put all these in. I've demonstrated on this. So let me move the camera and get my body in there. And when I come back, I'll have all this connected. Does that make sense? And then um, I'll take you to the next step of this. Okay, folks, so what we've done is we've got everything torqued out here. 30, 45 inch pounds on all of my four millimeter hex head screws, 35 inch pounds on all my grounds. Okay, now we've gone ahead and energized it. Now what I want you to look at is notice how this side is sealed in, okay? And this side's not, and it won't even let me. I can, it's like I was saying, it's mechanically and electrically isolated so that I can't even push this in even if I tried to, okay? But I was demonstrating this a little earlier. Okay, let me get the heartbeat on it. And now up here, see how he's beeping? Okay, so I know I got power on my black, power on my red, and stay with me on this. I'm going to show you something. This is the generator. We're going to start the generator in a minute. But look, the generator's dead. Generator's dead. So if this is sealed in, power's going to come through. I've got it here. I've got it on red. Got it on all these top screws. All these top screws, well, not neutral. But all the top screws are energized. And you might say, well, wait a minute. How come it's not through? Because this guy's here is not sealed in. It's dead on this side. Therefore, power's coming in through the top. 
but not going back to the generator. And now I'm going back into my coach. See that? Now we can start the generator and you'll see all this guy still seal in and this guy relax. So here would be a question. Well, let's say I have shore power and generator both on, both available to me. Generator's available and shore power's available. Well, the way it's set up is a generator is gonna be the primary and the shore power is gonna be the secondary. So you could say that if, if you have both available, generator is gonna win over the two, okay? So let's go ahead and start the generator, okay? So Eric's gonna go start the generator for us. Um, and so now you've seen how this little jewel works here. And I've also, like I was talking about, it comes through here. Now the whole top of this is energized, so it wouldn't matter if my red was here or here, because as long as red stays on red, black stays on black, and white stays on black. Okay, now he's gonna start his generator. Generator, okay, now look, I got power right when he started his generator, see that? And look, I got power on there too. Now watch what happens after about 30 seconds or so. The generator is going to spin up, okay? And you're going to hear this thing click and him relax, okay? Let's see if Darren's a liar. I'm gonna, that thing's beeping on me. So right now we got everybody available, okay? He's even down here. He's even coming through the shore cord. I don't know. If... So usually we have about a 30 second spin up on the generator. Now, there is one thing I want to look at, though. You know what? Um, I did keep the wires in the same location, but remember that sticker on the back, folks, that we were looking at? Uh, okay, I expect it's going to work because I used my mirror here to look in the back, and this sticker on the back, like we were talking about earlier, it does say shore, and this one does say generator. So I'm expecting there to be a clunk, and it'll switch sides here in just a second. Your air conditioners aren't on, are they? They, they better not be. Air conditioners? Uh, I don't think so. Turn no, them on. they weren't whenever she did. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Whenever I turned it on. Okay. She may have just turned them on. Though. Okay. Well, we could demonstrate a fiery uh, no, transfer switch. Okay. No, they were on. They were <laughs> okay. on. They're probably on now. They All right. On. I would have expected it to have switched hey, over by right now. Uh, okay. Should be happening pretty soon. Well, hey, say hi to my... My people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. While we're waiting for this clunk, we got Eric with Techno RV. He's going to say, give me a shout out. Yeah, yeah. There he is. My RV works. So I uh, had all this work I needed doing Squim Washington and I uh, got the referral to Darren here. And uh, so super pleased getting this done, getting an air conditioner replaced. Uh, what are we doing? We're going to fix my vacuum. Your vacuum, your dryer. dryer. Yeah, man. So it's pretty much there was nothing I could say that Darren wasn't like, yeah, we can do that. So yeah. pretty happy with that. Cool. Thanks for the shout out. Yeah, yeah. Now we can get this thing to work for us. I am expecting a uh, clunk. I do have power sitting on here. So at this point, we can start troubleshooting. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, didn't, I guess I didn't know generator one. Yeah. Good uh, we got power on both leads. So now. You get a bonus feature, folks. We're going to actually try to troubleshoot this thing. Um, so for that, I'm going to use my meter. Okay, remember me? Uh, we're going to follow the trail at 12 volts. So uh, you can see the meter there. Yes, okay, so you watch that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground one side of my meter to what am I going to ground it to? I'm going to ground it to the same thing the box thinks it is ground. I might think chassis is ground, for example, but maybe the box doesn't know the chassis ground so I I want to use the same ground that the device I'm troubleshooting thinks is ground okay and uh, so now let me get a little probe here okay I'm just gonna hit this thing I want to I expect my meter to go to one so about 118 on that side and so black is 118 red is 117 so let's go over here and see what the generator is giving us 119.9 and over on this side I'm at 118 so if this black up here is come at 119 even 119 even okay so the black circuits get it from the utility okay the generator is giving me 119.9 on black and eh, 
120 on red. Now this red is 117. So okay, so we're getting it through the utility. Um, let's try something. Let, let's see. So what I've confirmed, I want to try. I want to try something. Um, this sticker right here says shore power in. This top one right here says shore power in. Go ahead and unplug our shore power. Let's see if this thing clicks. Okay, just unplug it. And uh, we're good with AC being on. I want the air conditioner off. Right, air conditioner off. Air conditioner off. And that's what we were talking about, folks, with that air conditioner being off. Uh, Eric's going to go turn that air conditioner off for us, um, making sure that we don't buck phases, making sure that we don't weld our contacts. Um, and uh, so he's going to turn off the air conditioners. And what we're going to do, real simply, um, this is shore power. I'm wiggling this cord down here that goes here. Let me let me pan you back a little bit, give you a better view of what we're troubleshooting here. Uh, you might be a little crooked. Hold on, bear with me. I'm ready. Yep, shore power is going to turn off. That should seal in. Okay, everything let go. Okay, so this one never sealed in, right here. Um, so even though. So this, this cord that goes up, this one is generator, and uh, he's hot, but he's not sealing in. So um, I'm going to move you guys. Let me turn you off and move you, and I'll tell you what I find out. But I'm going to go, tr well, you're going to benefit from watching me troubleshoot. So we're going we're gonna to see what's going on here. So here's what I'm going to troubleshoot. There is a what's called a coil voltage on these contactors, OK? And the coil voltage, so there's two parts. There's what's called a three-phase, these are like three-phase contactors. You got L1, L2, L3, but we're using them in a single phase for the three wires. So that's great, but there's a power side of this and there's a control side of this. The control side is what's gonna create an electromagnet and suck that blue thing inside, okay? Basically, this is a big magnet. When you hit it with 120 volts, it's gonna suck it in, okay? Call it sealed in. Now, in here somewhere, down in there, I've got this yellow wire, so Right there, I only have 65 volts, okay? And right here, I got 65. So I am supposed to have, my coil voltage is supposed to be, um, so what I wanna do, I wanna figure out what wires feed these coil voltages. Um, see, there's my 120, and I'm way back inside. Here is a red wire. And red wire goes where? So remember I was saying they're electrically and mechanically isolated from each other? What's happening is this guy here is not sealing in. And so we need to figure out the coil voltage, where that connects to. You got that other box? Andy? Well, the box I took out, we're going to look at it. I just need to get my eyeball up in here. It's going to have an A1 and, a, and an A2 written on it and I, I it's, it's so crowded up in here I got a lot of wires what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be pulling off of the primary side this is the primary side of the contactor the secondary side of the contactor they're gonna be pulling off power from the primary side to go run the control circuit okay so that's why on the primary side you do have all these little wires and everything and um, I just I can't get my head in there just to, to my eyeball to see where the coil voltage is I think it's way in the back and if that is the case I've got right there. See, I've only got 68. Can you see that? 60, can you, here, let me turn you down a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. Six, here, let me do this. I've only got 65 volts. Here, what we're going to do is I'm going to look. Let me bring you here and show you what I'm looking at. Okay. Okay, so look in here. Okay, there's that A1 I was talking about. Let me dig in there a little deeper. Let me go in through the top. Hold on. Wait for it. Okay, see this A1 right here? And opposite is gonna be one called A2. See, so there's A1, A2, way in the back, okay? That, when you energize those, you are energizing the electromagnet, okay? So now I know where they are. They're on the white part in the back, okay? And then, okay, so this is a good shot. So these wires right here was where black, white, and red went, and you'll see that they, they're gonna piggyback off of white, red, and black off of these control wires. Um, 
what is that, black, white, and red. And they're going to go down to the control board and do all their magic. But at the end of the day, I need 120 volts on A1 and A2, don't I? If I get 120 volts on A1 and A2, then this contactor is going to seal itself in. And so what's not happening is we're not getting 120 volts on A1 and A2. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to verify where does it come from. It should come from right here. It should go through the control board and end up on that A1. And there's A2 right there. Okay, so now we know what to look for. All right, let's go back over here. It's exciting. Yeah, man. Never dull moment. Okay, so now, now we're going to go way back up in here. Okay, so I've got 65 volts from the generator. Okay, so what that's telling me now here's a deal here's a deal I got 120 from the generator this black wire that is piggybacked off the generator black wire a little control wire he has 120 volts he's gonna go down to this little clip can you see where I'm pointing to you kinda can he's gonna go down to this control board right here to the clip and I'll bet you this guy is gonna come from the shore cord and this guy is going to come from the, uh, so let me probe. All right, the meter just shut itself up. Let me probe right in here. I don't know, like that sound my meter just made, so let me turn it, reset him. Um, so I get way down here, I'm on A2. A2 only has 65. Plug us back in for a second. A2 only has 65 volts. You want AC power again, right? Yeah, on shore power, because I'm going to compare the two. And uh, A1 only has 65 volts. See that? So that's not 120, and it takes 120 to seal these in. I'm curious about this board right here. Now watch this. Let me get to the same spot. Oh, there we go. Sealed in. There is A2. Now look, A2 only has 65 volts. And let me get a flashlight. I need this cord wheel moved out of the way. If I can get my eyeball on where A1 is way up in there. Okay, okay, I see it, I see it. So we're going to, I'm on AC, and I'm gonna probe right in there. See, I've got 65 volts on that. You get that thing still here? That's a the coil, so the coil voltage could either be AC or DC. I expect it to be AC. Why would they make it anything else? Yes, let me, let me show you what I'm looking at right here. Okay, now when we look inside, you see the, the coil voltage now we're not talking about the big contactor we're talking about the control side remember there's a power side and a control side so now we're on the control side and that's a problem we're having with the generator so i have an a1 and an a2 and the control side is 120 volts you might find something where it's 12 volts dc that is your control side that's sealing in 120 volts okay through a relay so this would be a relay the reason it's called a contactor is because it's bigger so you have a relay a contactor a solenoid they all kind of operate on the same principle. They all have a coil voltage. So now we need to get 120 volts. Now, I'm having a thought. Remember my ground reference. Let's go back to ground reference because I'm only getting 65 volts, but maybe I need to get a positive pin here, my red pin on my meter here, and the black lead, okay, of my meter on A2. Let's see if I can get 120 between these two because maybe their ground reference is not the same as the, as the ground going to the coach. Does that make sense? It should be but maybe it's not. So let's see if we can get 120. The bottom line is we need to get 120 here to seal him in and 120 on this guy to seal him in. Make sense? So let's put you back here. Okay. Uh, let's grab. Okay, so I'm gonna take my ground off. Now I've got two little pro pins and uh, now here's a trick finding a spot without getting electrocuted. Okay, I'm on A1. And I think that's A2. Well, obviously it's not. That right there. So the only what? Let me make sure I'm plugged in right. Oh. Let's plug him in. There. I have newer probes.
Yes. I'm gonna go with newer probes. I'm gonna prove my probes are working and give me a good reading by referencing ground here to that under 19 and I'm gonna go to here. Okay, so good. I know my probes are connected to my meter correctly because I got a good reading on my meter. Now, I'm not worried about polarity here. So I'm gonna go to my A2 lead way back up in there. Okay, and I'm gonna go to my A1 lead right in there. And for some reason, I'm only getting 5.4, so let me reference ground. There's my 65. And let me go down here to this guy. Reference ground, 65. But somehow I'm getting 120 because it's sealing it in, and I, I just really wish I could get my eyeball on that thing. And uh, so here I have A2. Here I have... You know, Eric, I am about to move your cord reel so I can see inside of this thing. I just can't get the angle on it. I can see A1 and A2. All right, there's that. See, I'm only getting 1.2 amps. So my, my readings are consistent between the one that's working and the one that's not working, if that makes sense. But, uh, but when I reference ground, I'll use this ground, 64 amps AC. And it's working up there, so... No, no, it, 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 the coil's a coil. Uh, coil one's 120 it has it written right on the thing um, all right let me do some figure let me I'm gonna stop the film and do some figuring and see if we can't get this figured out we'll bring it back and whatever I find out I'll share with you okay but I don't need to keep burning film and wasting your time while I try to figure this out okay folks so here's where we're at we have made the I made the call a commander's decision that I think we have a defective unit the what led me to make this decision is that two things. One, I've got consistent readings from top to bottom. In other words, my coil voltage, which is supposed to be 120, is 65, but it's consistent from the top and it's also on the bottom. Um, I am very curious why I'm not, why this thing is sealing in, well, that's sucking itself in at 65. Uh, here, here's the other part of it. My meter is on AC volts. I touch a1 and A2 with my red and my black, I expect 120 because that's what the coil operates at. It states on the coil voltage, it's a 120 volt coil, which is a magnet that pulls this thing in. So I expect A1 and A2 between my two leads to read 120 volts. I'm reading zero. When I reference A1 to ground, I get 65. When I reference A2 to ground, I get 65. What's up with that? I don't know. Um, but what we do know is that this one and this one, they're consistent. I'm getting consistent 65 amp reading from A1 to ground and A2 to ground, and I'm getting 65 volt reading from A1 to ground and A2 to ground on both of these. Now, the board here is what's different, and maybe there's, it's, it's, there's something here. I don't know. But what we've decided to do is take this transfer switch out and put the other transfer switch back in. So I'm going to stop the camera. You've seen me do that. I'm going to put it in. And once a new one's in, we'll do a demonstration on it interlocking with generator being the primary. Okay? So let me move you out of the way because you're right where I need to be. And I can go a lot faster if I'm not reaching over you. So I'll be right back. Okay, folks, so we have put the old transfer switch back in. I've torqued all my screws, 45 inch pounds, 35 inch pounds. Um, and so all my grounds, I always do my grounds first. They're done. All these are tight, so and everything's set. So go ahead and plug us into shore power, please. Okay, the lovely Miss Ann is going to plug us into shore power. Okay. I didn't do it. <laughs> I promise. I've been good. All right, so this guy's going to seal in. There we go. Okay, now let's try generator. Okay. Okay. So Eric's going to go. We got Ann doing shore power. We got Eric's going to seal in the generator. 
and um, our seal on the generator. My brain's going a thousand miles an hour, folks. Um, so we have 120. Okay, now when the generator starts, we should see it here, and then it it better <laughs> transfer. Now let me get my meter because remember we were playing with A1 and A2. I want to see what our readings are going to be on this because that was very strange. Um, the coil wants to see 120. It's doesn't care what kind of a fancy control board it goes through. It just wants to see 120 to seal itself in. Wait for it. There we go. Did you see that, folks? So this one released. There was an interval, and then this and sealed in. Okay, that's what it should have done. Now, I'm gonna put my meter right here. Can you see that? Good, okay, there's a little bit of a glare. Let me go, it's even worse. Oh, I don't know if you can see. Oh, hold on, I hit a button. All right, I'm gonna put it right there. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, remember our A1 and A2? Now, let's find out where our voltage is. I got it on the red and the black on the generator. Also, the shore power red and black. But let me, I'm dying. This is the million dollar question here. Uh, okay, here, right through here is A1. Make sure I can see it. Okay, I see it. All right, let's go in here with A2. thing is I can't see it so I'm blind here uh, it's got to be right there so note to self if you're gonna apply play with live electricity make sure you see it there I got a1 and a2 and it's showing me 118.8 volts between a1 and a2 which is what I've been expecting to see this whole time um, so I'm happy about that um, now let me get up here I'm on A1 up on top, okay, I'm on A2 at the bottom. Now, my meter right now, I'm on A1 and A2 on this top contactor. My meter is displaying a whopping two amps. So let's go ahead and kill the generator. I'm gonna leave, can you see that? I wanna make sure you see this, this is the money shot. I'm going to leave this on here, and when my meter displays 120 or 118 or whatever it is, is when you're gonna see this coil energize sealing in the top contactor so let's just wait here he's turned off the generator okay there 100 and if I get my meters in there right I got 120 a minute ago you saw that right you saw 120 now I'm really confused for those of you who know my background, I was a professional engineer for 25 years dealing with stuff just like this. There it is. I didn't have my meter set in the right spot. There we go. So my uh, A1 and A2 is uh, 120 volts. Steady. Okay. So there we go. It's working as advertised. Um, all the more convinced that there was definitely something wrong with that other one. So it was almost worth taking that one out and putting this one back in. There never was anything wrong with this one. Um, the other one's got some more bells and whistles. You know Eric, he likes his bells and whistles. Um, doing everything he can to provide a good product for you guys. So we're gonna put the cover back on this one and uh, move on to the next task. Well folks, I'm gonna wrap this one up. If you found value in anything that I did here, give me a thumb up, that's how you can thank us. If you like these types of videos where I take you along on troubleshooting and repair videos, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It's YouTube My RV Works. And uh, happy camper say My RV Works. And I think Eric's gonna be a happy camper. Well, once we get the right video, right, right thing in. And um, so we're going to end this video here, but stay tuned. There's going to be other videos we're making on the same exact unit. Next, we're going to be working on an air conditioner up on the roof. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate my crane. So stick around. Uh, look for the other videos like this. Um, and happy camper team, my work. So this is Darren from Squim, Washington, signing off. Bye-bye. <laughs>